What's up guys, my name's Brandon and we've had yet another pretty busy week in the world of Apple and thankfully that is not going to be slowing down anytime soon with iOS 15 coming up next month. But anyways, just to quickly recap this past week, on Monday we got iOS and iPadOS 14.5.1 released to the public and along with that we did also get watchOS 7.4.1 and macOS Big Sur 11.3.1, all of which were mainly security updates. And then on Tuesday, we got another macOS Big Sur update, but it was a beta. We got 11.4 beta 2, but that was the only beta software released this past week. We did not get any new iOS 14.6 betas. We're still on beta 2. So in this video, I just wanted to give you guys an update on both iOS 14.5.1 and iOS 14.6 beta 2, both of which I've been running for about a week now. So we're going to discuss the new features performance, battery life bugs, and more as we usually do. And along with the updates on the software, we're also going to discuss the latest leaks, rumors, and news surrounding Apple. So let's start off by talking about iOS 14.5.1, the latest public release. So there's really not much to say about this update. I mean, it was mainly just a security patch update to fix the two very dangerous WebKit bugs that were being actively exploited out in the wild, as noted by Apple. So this was pushed to iOS, watchOS, and macOS since it did affect all of them since this WebKit bug, of course, takes place inside of Safari. And then the other thing that Apple fixed with iOS 14.5.1, really the only thing mentioned in the release notes at all is this right here where it says this update fixes an issue with app tracking transparency where some users who previously disabled allow apps to request to track and settings may not receive prompts from the apps after re-enabling it. So people who were having that issue did report that it was fixed. However, a lot of people, the more important issue or the more, more widespread issue, I should say, is people having the issue where the tracking section right here is just completely grayed out. They cannot access this at all. They cannot toggle this on or off. It's just grayed out. And this is what I've had, of course, on iOS 14.5 beta one, all the way through to the final and 14.6, updating to 14.6 beta fixed it for me. But a lot of people, even after 14.5.1, are still having this whole area grayed out. Now, Apple does list a few reasons why it could be grayed out, such as if you're under 18, if your account is new, or if your Apple ID is managed by an educational institution. But again, most people, who are having this issue do not fall under any of those three categories. So it's really bizarre that the headlining feature for 14.5 is still not fixed. And we even got an update after 14.5 and it's still not fixed. So that's unfortunate. You know, again, 14.6 fixes it for me. That's what fixed it for me and a lot of other people. You can also sign out of iCloud and back in to temporarily fix it but it's a shame that that issue is still remaining for people after 14.5.1. Now, something very interesting was discovered by somebody over on Reddit. Apparently it was accidental, but if you have an AirTag, you can actually get access to a dev menu that was definitely not supposed to be seen by the public. So this is actually available in both 14.5.1 and 14.6 beta 2. So I'm sure Apple will fix this, but if you go into find and you have an AirTag, if you tap on the name of that AirTag four times, take a look at the dev menu that comes up. So you could see this right here, obviously nothing that's going to make sense or nothing that you're really going to, or at least most people, unless you're an app developer are going to understand this, but it's a really interesting dev menu right here. And again, if you tap four times, it disappears as well. So pretty interesting that somebody actually discovered this hidden menu inside of iOS 14.5.1. Now, I also wanted to discuss the performance and the battery life on 14.5.1 because I've seen your guys' comments. I read every comment in my 14.5.1 video and in the community polls and all of that. And it seems like you guys are having issues with both performance and battery life. So battery life more than the performance, but performance, a lot of people are reporting that it's just slower in general than 14.5 and that the Geekbench scores are lower as well. Now, for me personally, my Geekbench scores were not bad here on 14.5.1. So you can see here, I ran this, got a 1595, 4239, pretty normal scores for me, but it seems like some people are getting really bad results in Geekbench and just overall performance is not great. But for me, it's about the same as 14.5. I mean, I use it on my secondary device here, my 12 Pro Max, but you know, from the time I've used it in the past week, it's been just about the same as 14.5. But some of you guys have expressed that the performance is just a little bit worse on 14.5.1 for whatever reason. But what more of you guys complained about is the battery life. So a lot of people are having issues with battery life. People are reporting that the battery life is worse than 14.5, which is strange. So, you know, I'm not really sure what's changed on the back end 
to lead to worse battery life on 14.5.1, but some of you guys are experiencing that. Now me, I don't use this device on a daily basis, like all day, every day, so it's really hard for me to say, but from the limited time I used it for about two or three days, I can say that it was about the same for me as 14.5. So it seems like a lot of people just have battery drain issues in general, but I don't know. Some of you guys are just saying that the battery life is worse overall. So let me know down in the comment below if your performance and battery life are worse or if they're better or if it's the same here on 14.5.1. So now let's go ahead and talk about iOS 14.6 beta 2. So there are no additional features or changes that you can actually see. I did not find anything physically changed that I didn't already mention in my original what's new video but there are some things in the code and also some issues that have come up over the past week. Now I did mention this in my what's new video for 14.6 beta 2, but code in iOS 14.6 beta 1 hinted at hi-fi audio or high fidelity audio being added to Apple Music. So this also got confirmed by a couple more sources this past week. So hopefully we will actually see that very soon along with the AirPods 3 which it was reported by Hits Daily Double that both of those are going to be released relatively soon, most likely either at or before the Worldwide Developers Conference on June 7th. Now, also this past week, Facebook and Instagram both pushed out their splash screens about the app tracking transparency feature in iOS 14.5 and iOS 14.6. So you can see here, this is the splash screen from Instagram and it says you're on iOS 14.6. And it's really interesting the way that they kind of describe this feature to its users, especially people who are not technical like us and don't really understand it. It's very interesting. So take a look at this right here. It says help keep Instagram free of charge. So it's basically telling you to disable this to keep Instagram free. So really interesting, you know, way of putting things there by Facebook here on Instagram. They also did this on Facebook itself as well. So here's the splash screen that I got on Facebook and you can see right here, it says help keep Facebook free of charge. So they're basically, uh, you know, it's kind of bluffing at Apple, but they're saying that basically if you don't disable this, it's going to eventually lead to Facebook and Instagram being paid applications. So clearly a bluff, but it's really interesting how they're wording this because just recently Mark Zuckerberg said that this will actually help them. So doesn't seem like that's the case, but really interesting new splash screens here for the app tracking transparency feature for both Facebook and for Instagram. I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's very interesting to see, you know, how this is progressing. Now, speaking of this feature, I did just recently post this community poll right here where I asked, are you allowing apps to track your activity across other apps and sites? And you can see here that 83% of people said that they don't allow any apps to track their activity. 8% said that they don't mind you know, personalized ads and then 9% said some, but they don't allow Facebook or Instagram to track their activity. So very interesting results there. And also according to Flurry Analytics, they just put out a report saying that only 4% of iOS users are opting in to allow apps to track their activity Four, only 4%. So 96% of people are clicking on no for all applications and they're opting out of this new feature. So pretty crazy. And I'm just going to read through some of these comments real quick here because I like showing you guys in these uh, videos as well. You guys that leave comments on these community posts and you can see here, you know, people are saying that they don't like people being tracked, you know, people tracking them and things like that. And the thing that people, you know, some people don't realize is that it's not actually humans that are actually seeing your information. They're not seeing like every single site you visit. It's basically just tracking these, these websites like Facebook and Instagram are tracking your usage to serve you more personalized ads. That's why, you know, if you Google like an e-bike, you're going to start seeing a lot of e-bike ads, you know, for example. So that's kind of, you know, the premise of that. So you can see a lot of people saying this feature is still grayed out, which I talked about earlier. Brian here makes a good point saying we are being tracked no matter what. That is a very good point. I mean, just look at the fact that we're signed in to all these places and we have our credit cards on file. We have our address there. You know, we're using AirTags to share our exact location. I mean, we're being tracked no matter what. That is very true. And here's a good take from Anonymous that I agree with. He says, I let some apps track me. I mean, I'm going to get ads whether they're personalized or not. Very true. But apps like Facebook that are more aggressive and almost malicious with their users data. I don't let them track me. Facebook is very low for threatening to start charging customers who don't allow them to track. It's an empty threat and Facebook still makes plenty of money on ads. I 100% agree with that comment right there. And that's pretty much my 
exact take on this as well. I definitely think it's a bluff from Facebook and I agree with everything else there as well. So really good comments. I really like reading your guys's you know, thoughts on these things as well. So make sure you guys go ahead and participate in these community polls when I do post them over there on that community tab. Now, I also wanted to discuss some bugs in iOS 14.6 beta 2. And the main one that I've seen a lot of people complain about is that Siri cuts off mid sentence. So this happens on the iPhone itself and also through CarPlay. So basically it cuts off during navigation and it's really annoying. So I didn't know about this until I read it in my comments on my 14.6 beta 2 video. A lot of people mentioned it and also on Twitter. So I decided to turn on the audio during my navigation and it happened to me as well. So basically it would start saying, you know, turn left on and it would just cut out and it wouldn't say anything else. So apparently this has been happening for a while but I just recently tested it after reading your comments and I now see that that is an issue. So if you are having the Siri cutting out mid sentence, it is not just you. Now also another bug I had here in 14.6 beta two is you can see here, I sent an image to a group chat and it says over here that the message was not delivered. It basically told me I could not deliver this message. I tried resending it like 10 times only to realize that it actually did send the first time. I mean, people even reacted to it right there different people, not myself, other people reacted to the photo right there, but it says it was not delivered. So not sure about that bug. I did get this before on like iOS 13, but it's been a long time. So it seems like for whatever reason that has come back here in 14.6 beta two. And just an update on the music bugs that I had in 14.5 that I mentioned a lot here on the channel, the music cue bug where the top song would not be able to be moved. You didn't get those three lines right there. That seems to be mostly fixed here in 14.6 beta two. Some people are reporting still having the issue where it shows up or it doesn't show up and then they go out of the queue and back in and then it shows up again or just randomly appears. So it seems like it's mostly fixed like 90%, but not completely. And then also the airplay to home pod feature, you know, the bugginess is also not completely fixed here in 14.6 beta two. I had my first hiccup actually yesterday and it was just very laggy and buggy, but again, it is mostly fixed. I'd say 90% fixed from 14.5. So hopefully we see, you know, it fully fixed by the time the final of 14.6 gets released, hopefully later this month. And then also the loud notification bug is still present here in 14.6 beta two. I've had that pretty consistently here, just like I did in 14.5. So every bug I mentioned though, has been going on since iOS 14.5 at the earliest. So none of these, are new bugs in iOS 14.6. Now, as far as the performance and battery life goes here on 14.6 beta two, it's actually great. And I'm actually starting to prefer 14.6 beta two over 14.5. I think I've actually fully started preferring this beta over 14.5, the latest previous release, 14.5, 14.5.1. So performance and battery life are both great. I mean, it's about the same, honestly, as 14.5, but we do have bug fixes. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have more improvements in like the music application and some of these other applications just run a little bit smoother here on 14.6 in terms of bug fixes. I don't have as many bugs as I did in 14.5. So I just like 14.6 better overall, not to mention it did, you know, allow me to have this app tracking transparency feature enabled, whereas I did not have that on 14.5. So now what is next for Apple? So today is of course, May 8th and beta three should be here next week. So the week of the 10th, I think it's going to be early in the week as Apple usually does. And I'm just going to go ahead and place my bet on the 11th Tuesday because Apple of course loves Tuesday releases. So we could see beta three early next week. I think we should see that. And the final should be here when the new iMac and the iPad pros get released, which is the 21st. So we could see iOS 14.6 get released to the public on the week of the 17th there. So really just, you know, a little over a week away, we could see the final. Now it could also come on the week of the 24th. So we'll have to wait and see, but we could very well only be getting like one or two more betas of iOS 14.6 before the final. If of course it is released before the new products. And then next month on June 7th, we will be seeing iOS 15 beta one on the first day of the worldwide developers conference. So I absolutely cannot wait for that to get released. So that is the latest on iOS 14.5.1 and iOS 14.6 
beta 2. So now let's move on to some reports, some leaks, some rumors, some things outside of software. So the 2022 Apple Watch could include a lot of long awaited health monitoring features like blood pressure, blood glucose, and blood alcohol monitoring. So this news comes from a recent report from The Telegraph, who reported that Apple is the largest customer of a British electronic startup called Rockley Photonics, which is a company who is developing what they're calling a quote, doctor on a wrist sensor or sensors. So these are optical sensors that can detect things like, of course, blood pressure, blood glucose, and blood alcohol levels. The company said that its next generation sensors could be in consumer smartwatches and other electronics as soon as next year, which would line up with when the Apple Watch Series 8 gets released. Now, a year after the Apple Watch comes out, we might be getting something even crazier, and that is a folding iPhone. So this speculation comes from leaker Ming-Chi Ko, who says that an eight inch foldable iPhone is coming in 2023. So he says that the phone is going to have a quad HD plus flexible OLED display and Apple is going to ship 15 to 20 million units in 2023. Now I'm not the biggest foldable fan, but if Apple does something different that Samsung and you know, others are not already doing with their foldable phones, I'll be very intrigued by this. And of course, Apple always does things really well when it comes to their smartphones. So I'm not gonna even shed any doubt on Apple with a folding iPhone. Now getting back to reality in present time, the next generation iPad mini, which was expected to be released in the first half of this year, has now been delayed until the second half of 2021, according to Ming-Chi Kuo. I think we all expected this one due to the new iPad Pros, basically just stealing the show at the April event and the fact that there is also a global chip and material shortage going on right now. So no surprise there to see these iPad minis get delayed. But I will keep you guys updated on everything going on as I usually do in these weekend follow-up videos. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next weekend's follow-up video. And of course, iOS 15 coverage, a lot of good stuff coming to the channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.